So, <clears throat> so Anthony, I was actually listening to a few other podcasts that you were on prior to kind of hopping on this. And, and I wanted to just start a little before sales on, on, on terms of your, uh, <coughs> your story. Can you tell us a little bit about like how you kind of went from, you know, rock and roll star to like where you are today? Star is a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> I, li- I mean, I like to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah, rock and roll was great, but stardom didn't happen. Uh, and minor stardom in in my hometown, maybe for a little I while. You're filling up arenas, from what I hear. Uh, yeah, if the like arena uh, arenas a thousand seats, yeah, we filled arenas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a kid, um, I didn't really have any kind of a vision. You know, because of just how I grew up and where I grew up, I didn't have that. And so rock and roll looked like the greatest thing on earth to me. I mean, there's sex and drugs and rock and roll and parties and the music. And it, it was everything at that time. And I saw Def Leppard in concert on July 6, 1982. I was 15 years old. They weren't that much older than me at that time. Uh-huh. And they were just killing it. I mean, and I was like, this is the best thing that's ever happened. And a couple years later, I saw David Coverdale and White Snake at Veterans Memorial with a, a girlfriend. I was 17 at the time. It was November. It was cold outside. They opened for Quiet Riot. Quiet Riot. You had a little bit more hair at that point, I'm, I'm assuming. Quite a bit. Quite a bit more. <laughs> I've seen photos. And um, I just noticed the way that women looked at David Coverdale, and I thought, I got to start a rock and roll band immediately. <laughs> I mean, every woman inside Veterans uh, Memorial Auditorium was looking at David Coverdale like, I mean, they were going to run up and grab him off the stage. I thought, I got to have that happen for me. <laughs> so I started a rock band. We did really well. I decided to move to L.A. Um, at, at one point in time, and I needed a job. So I got a day job in staffing, which was my family's business, and that was great. I had a great boss, left me alone. I did really good work, and then my boss left, and a new boss came in. Immediately started asking questions because that's what bosses do. Mm-hmm. want to figure out where they can make an improvement. And we weren't really interested in what he wanted to do or his improvement. We were just happy doing what we were already doing. But one day he started asking questions about the sales force. And I got, it took me a while to get the point of his question, but basically he was unhappy because he didn't think they were doing anything. And uh, eventually he fired all three of them over the course of about a month. And he came back to my desk and he had a, a report. And the report was all the clients that had been won in the branch over the last year. And they were literally all my accounts. I was the only one that won any accounts. And I wasn't the sales guy. I was the ops guy. So I, all I was doing was filling orders. But growing up in a family business, what I knew to do is that if you don't have anything to do, you pick up the phone and you call some people and you see if you can help them. But if you would have told me that was selling, I would have said, nah, it's not selling. I'm just trying to help some people get some people that they need. And um, basically, he said, how did you, meaning somebody with hair down to his waist, you know, this kid from Ohio, how did you get these accounts? Because they were pretty good accounts. I mean, I had a nice, I had a nice little client list going and um, he couldn't figure out how that happened. I didn't know either. So basically I said, I call some people, I try to help them with their problems. Some of them say, yes, I can come and see them. And then some of them give me orders. And he said, great, I want you to go into full-time outside sales. But what I heard him say was, I want you to become a psychopathic axe murderer and go on a killing spree in greater Los Angeles area because I thought salespeople were horrible people. That that was my only experience was with car salespeople and they were horrible. So I resisted it until he threatened to fire me and I went into outside sales and basically won the largest account in the company on the western half of the United States. And um, at first I was a worse salesperson because he told me I was a salesperson. So that's the worst thing you can do to somebody is tell them, now you're a right. salesperson. And, uh, and then it took a little while, but I got back to doing what I knew how to do, which is go out and try to help people get a better result than they're getting. And that's all we do in sales. We go out and we try to help people get better results than they're getting. So it's super consultative. And I fell in love with it. 